Hello everyone, I'm Landon Schlungen. and today we're going to learn Bash and SQL by building a bike rental shop. This is a 210 lesson course, so 78 lessons longer than this one right here. Uh, and it will probably take quite a while, so let's get started. And let's start this course. We're going to run with code ally. I'm sure it's going to pop up here. Yep. And then we should be good to go. All right, here we go. We can start this tutorial. The first thing we have to do is start the terminal. And we're going to do that with control back tick. And now we have to do echo hello terminal to move on. All right, echo hello terminal. There we go. And then control enter to move on. Uh, and looks like we have to connect to PSQL or Postgres. So we do PSQL dash dash username equals free code camp and DB name equals Postgres. There we go. List the databases with backslash L. And we just have the default ones right now. And we need to create a new database named bikes. So let's do that. Do that with create database. Create database bikes. And there we go. List databases again to make sure it's there. And it is. There it is. Connect to it so you can start building the structure. They have a bolded C. So we have to do backslash C bikes and then we are now connected to bikes as user free code camp <clears throat> we were we were connected to the postgres database uh, now we're connected to the bikes database all right your database needs three tables one for your bike inventory one for your customers and one for the bikes that are rented out create a table named bikes in your database all right so we're gonna do create table bikes so we have a bikes database and a bikes table looks like and display the tables. We can do that with backslash D. There we go. Bike. Now the table will have a few columns for bike information. First is a unique ID column. Add a column to the bikes table named bike ID. We can do that with alter table. Alter table bikes, add column. And we want to add bike ID, which is going to be a serial. Serial. And it's also going to be a primary key. And then make sure to close that off with a semicolon. And now we can display the bikes again, bikes table, backslash D bikes. Uh, but you do see the sequence in there as well. Now uh, that's for the serial. Mm -hmm. First column set, add on a column named type for the type of bike. Okay, so we're going to do alter table, bikes, add a column. And we have to add this type, which is going to be a varchar of 50. Varchar of 50, and it's going to be not null. Yeah, there we go. Display the details of the bikes table again. Backslash D bikes. And there we go. The first two columns look good. Add a column named size to the bikes table. That is an int and has a not null constraint. All right, so we're going to do the same thing basically. Add alter table bikes, add column. This is going to be size, which is going to be a type of int size, which is an int, and it's also going to be not null. So that should be good. Yep. Another column named available. Make it a Boolean. All right. And also not null. We give it a default value of true. Okay. So available. So by default, they're going to be available. Boolean. And not null. And then we can add default at the end here. Uh, default of true. Like so. Yeah. Cool. Let's play the details of the bikes table again. Backslash D bikes. Okay, can we see the yeah, default of true there? That's cool. That, that table is done for now. Create another table named customers. All right, create table customers. And there we go. Add a customer ID column at alter, alter table customers. Add a column. And we have to add the customer ID column. It's going to be type serial and primary key. Primary key meaning it's unique and it's what you use to connect the two other tables. Display the details of the customer's table. Make that slash D customers. There it is. Add a column named phone for customers' phone numbers. All right, so we're going to alter table customers, add column. This column is going to be the phone column. Make it a varchar, looks like, 
and a max length of 15. And then also make sure it can't be null and it has to be unique. All right, so just do not null unique, not null unique. There we go. Cool. Add the last column, call it name. All right. So this is going to be a name, which is also going to be a varchar of 40 and not null, except it can be the same as other <laughs> as other rows. All right, display the details of the customers table. Backslash D customers. There they are. Table is finished. Lastly, you need a table to store which bikes are rented and who has rented them. Create a new table named rentals. Great. Create table rentals. There we go. Add a rental ID column. Filter table rentals. Add column. Add this uh, Intel ID column, yeah. Uh, it's serial and rookie. Display the details, backslash D rentals. Next, you need a column for the customer who's renting a bike. Add a column named customer ID. This will have an ID of a customer and then make the column an int and not null. All right. So we're going to do the same thing, alter table rentals, add column. This time it's going to be the customer ID, customer ID, and it's going to be int and not null. And then we're going to add a constraint to it. I guarantee it. Yep. All right, make the column. You just added a foreign key. Yep. So we're going to do alter table rentals, uh, add foreign key. The column name is this customer ID column, customer ID, and it references, refer, references the customers table. Yeah, customers, uh, customers, customer ID column. Yeah, customer ID. There we go, should be good, awesome. Let's play the details of the rentals table. Make sure your key is set, backslash D rentals. Foreign key is set, you need another column so you know what bike a customer is renting. Add a column named bike ID. All right. So basically the same thing, I think. Um, this time it's going to be bike ID, and then we're going to add a constraint to that as well for the bikes. Yeah. Add a column for a foreign key. This time it's going to reference, um, so just change customer to bike everywhere. Uh, bike references the bike stable and the bike ID column of the bike stable. Right, bike ID. Sweet. Display the details, backslash D rentals. Moving along, you want to know when a customer rents a bike and when it gets returned. Add a column to your rentals table named date rented. That's a type of date. Make sure it can't be null and give it a default value of now. All right, so we need to alter table, the rentals, and then we're going to add a column of date rented. It's going to be a type of date, and it's going to be not null, and default to now, like so. Here we go. Let's play the details of the rentals table again, backslash D rentals. Okay. We got everything in there. Looks good. Lastly, you need a column for when a customer returns a bike. Add a column named date return. That's a type of date. All right. And then I'm guessing it can be nullable. It's just going to be a type of date and date return. Returned. All right. Yeah. Move on. Okay. Muted. Okay. Just. Uh, okay. Whatever. The tables are all finished. Display all the tables so you can see what you ended up with. Mm. Backslash D to view them all. If you have nine bikes in your inventory, add the first one to your bikes table. Um, yeah, it has a type of mountain and a size of 27. Make sure to put your varchar values in single quotes. All right, so we have to do an insert statement here. Insert into bikes values. Uh, insert into bikes and then inside here we have to specify what columns they are it's going to be type and size 
type size and the values are going to be 110 and 27. Okay, so we're going to go uh, mountain and I think yeah, single quotes and then 27 for the size. All right, sweet. View all the columns with the select. So we can do select all from bikes. Cool. Looks like it's all working. The bike ID and available columns were filled in automatically. Insert another bike. Give it a type of mountain and a size of 28. So we have to insert something. Yeah, insert another bike. Another type of mountain, but size of 28. All right, so we can do that pretty easily. Just change 27 to 28. Another mountain bike, make it a 29 inch bike. Ooh, getting pretty big now. All right, add a, a 27 inch uh, road bike. 27 inch road. Road. All right, cool. Select to view all the data in the bike stable again. Select all from bikes. There we go. Add the two bikes to your inventory. They are 29. 28 and 29 inch road bikes. Try to add them both one with one command. Um, really? I guess I can. Uh, road 28. And then I can add another one. Do I do that with like another parenthesis here? I like forgot how to do this. I think it's like this. And then we can just add another thing here and have another road. And 29. I think this will work. Never mind. Yeah, I kind of forgot how to do that. Oh, it is like this, isn't it? Yeah, except I, I guess I, what did I do? Oh, no extra parentheses, I guess. So get rid of these. And now it should work. Okay, cool. There's three more bikes. Add 19, 20, and 21 inch BMX mics to your table. Add them with one command. Oh, man. Can we? I don't want to, though. <laughs> um, uh, but they're making me do it. BMX. At least I think they are. BMX. 2019. BMX 20. And BMX 21. BMX 21. There we go. View all the data in your bikes table again. Select all from bikes. All right, your current inventory is all added for the rest of the project. I recommend leaving it that terminal open and connected, and that you should split the terminal so you have a second one. All right, so we're going to add another terminal just like that. Uh, do that, yeah, whatever. After you have opened it, use the touch command to create a file named bikeshop.sh in your project folder. All right, so we're going to go touch bikeshop.sh, and we are in the project folder, so we should be good. All right, this file will be the program of your rental shop. Let's get this thing here. Throw it up. Come on. There we go. And then we need to add this shebang at the top. And that is for running it in bash the whole time. In the file, use echo with the E flag to print this. All right. So I'm going to copy this bad boy. Get the new line at the beginning and end. I've done this quite a few times before now. Echo dash E. And now we have to paste this in here and a backslash N at the back and at the front for the new lines. All right. Use the terminal and the shamod command to make it executable. So we do that with shamod uh, plus x and then the bike shop sh file type dot slash bike shop. And then we run the script. There we go. In the script, create an empty function named main menu. This will have a few options to enter when the script runs. All right. So how do we do a function? I think it's just. Like main menu and then you do parentheses or something. Not really sure. Need a hint. Okay, yeah, parentheses and then a 
Make sure to close those off. There we go. In the function, echo the text, how may I help you? All right, let's copy that. Uh, echo, how may I help you? So that there's a greeting, follow your main menu at the bottom of the file. Um, so the function runs when you start the script. All right, so we're gonna call this function, main menu. I think we have to call it like that, I think, yeah, okay. On the file and terminal again, so you can see what it's outputting. Um, unexpected end of file, it's coming along, add another echo command in the function below the other one, make it output text that looks like this. Okay, and note that there's an empty line at the start. Uh huh. Add another echo command in the function below the other one and make it look like this. All right, below this one, echo. I think we have to do like dash E and then paste. And then I have to do like new lines in these. I think that's what they want. Backslash N and then and backslash N here. And then we also need a backslash N at the start. I think this will work. Make the output look like this. Echo dash E. Do I need another backslash N at the back? Run. Um, right, you should display the correct main menu options. Okay, it's not displaying anything. Echo dash E backslash N. Not really sure what's wrong. So I'm going to get a hint. Yeah. I need a space at the end. Why is there, hmm, there is a syntax error. Oh, I might have a main menu long, it might be just like that. Maybe that's why, yeah. I actually had that wrong, but it links to the previous one anyway. Hmm. Run the file to make sure it worked. And there we go, okay. That makes more sense. You have some options displaying. Next, you need to get input from whoever is using the program. Use the read command to read input into a variable called main menu selection below the options. All right, so we're gonna read main menu selection. So let's copy this. And right here, we're gonna go read and paste. And then whatever we input, it will read that in. When an option gets entered, you need to take a user to one of those other menus. Add an empty uh, rent menu function below the main menu function. Right. Below this main menu function, we need a rent menu function. There we go. For the time being, just echo rent menu in the function so you can know it's working. Echo rent menu. Add an empty return menu function below the rent menu function. Uh, for when a user enters the option to return a bike. All right, so we need a return menu function. Return menu. Should be good. Use echo to print return menu. Echo return menu. Add an empty exit function below the return menu function. All right, so let's just copy this down. This has to be exit. It has to be empty too, darn it. Uh, there we go. And then echo, thank you for stopping in this time. All right, let's copy that. Echo, paste. Uh, with a new line at the beginning and end, okay. So we have to add new lines, we have to add this dash E in there. And then we can do backslash in. That should be good. Yep. When a user enters an option at the main menu, you want to take them to the appropriate submenu. You can use a case statement for this. Here's an example. Okay. Uh, the expression you want is the main menu selection variable. 
You're expecting it to be a one, two, or three for your various menus. Add a case statement that takes users to the corresponding menus. The star is for when anything else is entered. Take users to the main menu when the variable isn't a one, two, or three. Okay, let's copy this first. And let's throw this it is in the main menu selection variable. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, that's for this, right? And then, so I have to paste that here. Um, is main menu selection variable, you were expecting it to be one, two, or three. For the various menus, yeah. Okay, rent a bike, return a bike, or exit. That makes some more sense. Add a case statement. Uh, the stars for when anything else is entered. Take users to the main menu when the variable isn't a one, two, or three. So that's for the star. The pattern is one, two, or three. One, two, three. The expression is this main menu selection. And then the star is going to be uh, main menu, I think. Does this work? It's running. Um, and I'll put the correct text. Oh, yeah. OK, I also need to change these up. So the first one is rent a bike. So rent bike. Oh, rent menu. Rent menu, we have return menu, return menu, and then we have exit here. Exit, I think that'll work. Come on, baby. I need dollar sign in front of here as well. Ah, yes, let's go. I mean, 30% of the way, okay. Run the script a few times and try out the different menus. Be sure to enter something other than one of the options to go to the main menu. All right, let's enter to turn a bike. Aha, uh -huh, return menu. Add an argument to where you call main menu in the case statement. Uh, it should be, please enter a valid option. Then next step will adjust the function so the message is printed when a user enters an invalid option. All right, add an argument to where you call main menu in the case statement. It should be this. An argument to where you call main menu in the case statement. An argument. An argument to it. An argument. <laughs> oh, like, like this. Um, is that what they want? That could be because that's an argument for this main menu function. Run. I don't know what you want. Function call. Oh. I see that no parentheses for this, it's just it comes after. And then that will be the argument. All right, at the top of the main menu function, add an if condition that checks if there's an argument, dollar sign one, pass to the function. If there is, print the message with a new line in front of it. All right, so we need a dollar sign one here. And then we have to say if, um, if then, if I, if we have a, argument passed to the function. So if, I think we can do that with like dash z or something, dollar sign one, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's what it is. And then print the message with a new line in front of it. Print the message, what this thing? Or how may I help you? Oh, print the message, which is dollar sign one. Aha, so we can do echo dash e, um, backslash n, dollar sign one, maybe, come on, baby, I don't know, if condition, uh, what condition do I need, oh, just like, if dollar sign one, maybe, uh, no, if, yeah, dollar sign one, echo, yeah, uh-huh, be sure to put it at the top of the main menu function. It is. Um, 
what am I doing wrong here? Echo dash E if I then if I run it, what do I get? Unexpected token near dollar sign one. What I do? What does my parameter mean? Beat mean. If there's an argument, okay, so I think I need these to have spaces here. No. Yes? No. Main menu. What is saying one? It should just be one? Or just nothing? Maybe nothing in here. Okay, I, yeah. I'm thinking too much like it's a regular programming language, but it's apparently not. <laughs> Okay, run the script and enter an invalid option to see the message. All right. So let's run this. And let's go to return menu. Oh, I should have done the invalid option. I can do that with a five. Yeah, and then it re-asks me. All right. Looks good. Delete the echo rent menu from the rent menu function so you can start adding the ability to rent a bike from the database. All right, let's get rid of this rent menu echo function or echo. You can do that with Control Shift K. You delete it in one false swoop. In the rent menu function, add three single line comments. All right, so let's grab this and then do three single line comments inside here. Paste. We're going to say get available bikes. Um, if no bikes available, and send to main menu, control slash, there we go. To get the bikes available, you need to query the database from your script. Below the shebang, add a PSQL variable that looks like this. Uh -huh. You will then be able to use it to query the database like that. All right, so underneath this, in bash, we're going to connect. Or that's how we connect. Uh, below the get of bike, below the get available bikes comment, create an available bikes variable that gets the bike ID type and size columns from the bikes table for the bikes that are available. Order the results by the bike ID column. Here's an example. Okay, well let's copy that then. Below the get available bikes comment. All right, so right here, paste. And then get available bikes, select all from bikes where available equals one, which is true or true like that. I think. Um, that gets the bike ID type and size. Bike ID type and size. Is that going to work? Um, ch -ch -ch, order the results by their bike ID column. Order by bike ID. Will that work? Yeah, there we go. Cool. Below the new variable, use echo to print it. Uh, place it in double quotes so it prints any new lines. All right, so we're going to go echo uh, available bikes dollar sign. Available bikes. Okay, cool. Run your script and go to the rent menu to see if the available bikes are being printed. All right, rent a bike. Oh, cool. Awesome. In the PSQL prompt, set the available column to false for all the bikes so you can see what it prints when there's no bikes available. Set the available column to false in the PSQL prompt. Um, ba -ba -ba. Set available column to false for all bikes. All right, so we do that with uh, the update uh, bikes set available equal to false, like so. There we go. Run your script and go to the rent menu to see the output. And now they should be all uh, available. And rent a bike, and nothing shows up. Okay, great. All right, so there's no bike available. The variable will be empty. In the script, below the if no bikes available comment, and if condition that checks if the variable is empty, 
use dollar or use dash z to check if it's empty. Place the send to main menu comment in its statements area. In its statements area. Okay, I don't know what you mean by statements, but all right below the if no bikes available. So we'll go if dash z, and we're gonna say available bikes uh, dollar sign available bikes available bikes is empty then we have to echo this thing here send to main menu and then fi here um comment oh i see just uh comment this out send to main menu uh da -da do get rid of this quote in this one now we're good okay cool <laughs> Very particular about what the comment should say. Below the comment in the if you just added, send users to the main menu and give them the message. Sorry, we don't have any bikes available right now. All right, so let's copy that. And we can send them to the main menu by doing this function, right? So we can just type in main menu, main menu, and then passing in this, uh, this argument for the message. All right. Run the script and go to the rent menu to see the message. Uh, yeah, to do rent. And sorry, we don't have any bikes available right now. How may I help you? Three, exit. All right, cool. If no bikes are available, you will get that, that message. And else to the if condition for when there is bikes available. In it, add four single line comments. Okay. Let's grab this. So we need an else in here. I think we can just do an else like this. And then I don't think we need a then. I'm not completely certain on that though. Uh, and then let's paste and add these comments. Uh, control slash and send to main menu. Okay. Below the display available bikes comment you just added, use echo to print here are the bikes we have available with a new line in front of the message. All right. Copy. Uh, here are the bikes available right here, echo dash E. And then we need in uh, backslash N and paste. Here are the bikes we have available. All right, move the echo command that prints all the available bikes below the message you just added. Uh, this one, let's move this. We can do that with holding Alt and then arrow down. And then there we go. All right, in the PSQL prompt, set all the bikes except for the BMX bikes back to true so you can see the list. All right, except for the BMX bikes. So we can do that with update bikes set available true where the type does not equal BMX. And then we can do yeah, BMX. And it has to be in single quotes. Okay, there we go. That should be good. All uh, right. All right. Uh, run. Is this thing going to work? Select the all. From lights. True, true, true. Except for those ones are false. It should work. Run. It, like um, it. Uh, it paused on me. I have to reset. Now run. Or is this thing? Update six again. Set all the bikes except for BM. Okay, there we go. Yeah, just uh, taking a while there. Run the script and go to the rent menu to see the list of bikes available. All right, run the script. Come on. Uh, let's, let's pause. Come on, man. Yes. Seriously, reset again. Run the script and go to the rent menu. All right, run the script. Seriously, can I not? It's not letting me type. 
Oh, disconnected, attempting to reconnect. This thing is not doing so hot. Hopefully it saved on the script and go to the rent menu to see the list of bikes available. And one. Okay, cool. It's saved. I just had to like refresh the page and restart it. All right, let's move on. Instead of directly printing the list, pipe the output into a while loop that reads each line. Here's how that looks. All right, it will read the first line. Okay, so instead of directly printing the list, we're going to do this. Instead of directly printing the list. So right here, paste. And then we need to do while read var1. Okay, the variables are bike ID type and size. Right here, bike ID type and size. And then in the statements area, use echo to print them. Oh, and bar. Bike ID bar type bar. Oh, interesting. I suppose there is a bar there. <laughs> okay. And then we have to echo these. Echo. Uh, bike ID. Uh, yeah, do they want us to do somehow in that order? Okay. So just like this and dollar sign. Hopefully this is what they want. Oh my man. Sign pipe and dollar sign size. Hopefully that works. Okay, cool. Run the script and go to the rent menu to get, again to see if it's working. Rent menu one. All right, here's the bikes available. It's working. Adjust the echo command that prints the bike info so that the first line printed would look like this one, and then that the rest would look the same, but with their bike info. Make sure to escape any characters you need to. So the first one looks like that. I uh, adjust the echo command. So the first line printed looks like that one, one, like that. The rest would look the same. I don't know what you want. Uh, 27 inch. I see. Uh, uh, go backslash echo dash e one twenty seven backslash quote and then actually that's size dollar sign size and then dollar sign type right i don't know i don't know one eight road 29 road okay so remove this one then yeah, I need help. Echo, bike ID. Oh, bike ID. Oh, I see. Dollar sign, bike ID. And size, type bike. Type bike. Not, not real. Come on, man. Really? Type bike. I really thought that'd work. Make the suggested line look like this. It does. One. That looks pretty good to me. The whole loop should look at that. Yeah, it does. Run. Come on. How's this not working? 
No dash E in here, huh? That's what you want. No dash E. Okay. Great. Run the script and go to the rent menu again. One. There we go. That's better below the ask for a bike to rent comment. Print which one would you like to rent with a new line in front of it. All right. Below the ask a bike for rent. Print this. Ask for a bike to rent. Echo dash. Make sure there's a new line. And then paste. Just below that, add a comment to read input into a variable named bike ID to rent. All right. Read. Read. Paste. There we go. Next, you want to find out how to test if the user input is a number. In the terminal, enter this to see if A is a number. All right. The conditional expression will run and echo. Our sign question mark will print the X code of it. Um, shoot, I can't. Oh, it's annoying. I can't, um, you know, copy into my terminal. It's annoying. Uh, tilde zero through nine. And then echo dollar sign question mark. There we go. One. It printed one for false. Yeah, one means there was a... Uh, it's so weird. It's backwards. All right, meaning that A did not match a pattern or A did not contain a number from 0 through 9. Enter the same commands, but check if A1 matches the pattern. All right, enter the same command, but check if A1 matches the pattern. Uh, it does. All right. A1 does contain a number from 0 through 9. Enter the same command, but change the pattern to this. That signifies the start of the pattern. And dollar sign means the end. All right, so we need a start. So we do that with a caret and a dollar sign for the end. Dollar sign. All right. One for false, A1 does not match the pattern. Using the same syntax, check if one matches the pattern. It should. And yes, it does. One does match pattern. Uh, check if one one matches the pattern. And it does not. That does not match because the pattern only allows a single number at a plus after the zero through nine to allow any strings that start uh, contain one or more numbers and n. All right. So add a plus. Learning some regular expressions here. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So that pattern will match any positive integers. You want to check if the input is not a number. Add a uh, in front of the comparison of the previous command. All right, so not a number. Um, that doesn't work. Um, yeah, I know. Okay. Oh, right there. I see. Not uh, not where the equal sign is. Before the number, even. There we go. Back in your script, below the if input is not a number com comment, add an if condition that checks if the input is not a number using the method you just practiced. Add the send to main menu comment in the then area of the if. All right, so let's copy this part and go here. If input is not a number, so we can do if, base that, and then we can do uh, then and fi and it's one one here is going to be the number, which is bike ID to rent, or sign bike ID to rent, and then if it is not a number, then we have to go back to the main menu, main menu, and we have to add a message. I'm guessing uh, add the send to main menu comment. Oh, just send to main menu comment. I see. And then in the next one, we're going to send it back to the main menu. That does my prediction, at least. All right, that should be good. Cool. If the bike ID to rent variable is not a number, add the code. All right. Let's copy this. And we need to do main menu again. Main menu. And paste that there. That is not a valid bike number. Uh -huh. On the script, go to the rent menu and enter something that isn't a number to make sure it's working. Okay. 
enter something that's not a number. Uh, let's see here. Rent a bike, something that's not a number, ASDF, and that is not a valid bike number. How may I help you? Cool. All right, exit. And else area for when the input is a number, you have these three single line comments in it. All right. And else area for when the input is a number. And then add these comments to it. Let's copy that. And else area. So right here, else. Else, what are we going to do? We're going to do some of these things. All right, get bike availability. If not available, and send to main menu. Another send to main menu. Hmm, okay. Below the get bike availability comment you just added, create a bike availability availability variable. Okay, set it equal to a query that gets the available column from the bikes table for the input. All right, so we have to add a query, and we did that up here somewhere, uh, right here, PSQL. So let's copy this down. Let's put it here, and it has to be a query that gets the available column from the bikes table. Uh, gets, gets the available column. All right, it gets the available available column from bikes. Um, I'm guessing it's where the bike ID to rent is. Uh, there, yeah, where bike ID equals bike ID to rent. Bike ID to rent. I'm guessing that's what we need. Also make sure to only get the row if it is available. Um, run. Okay, what is going, what's wrong? What is wrong? One, rent a bike. Two, um, it's not. Uh, I need to echo this or no? Create a set it equal to a query that gets the available column from the bikes table for the input. Also make sure to only get the row if it is available. Select available from bikes where bike ID is that. Uh, that looks right to me. Let's see what they say. And available equals true. Oh. Yeah. And available equals true, I see. And available and available equals true. Okay. That should work now. Cool. Right below the variable you just created, use echo to print it so you can see what it looks like. Use echo to print this. Echo. Dollar sign. Bike availability. Ability. There we go. Run the script a few times. All right. One. We want a number four or three. And that is available to rent. Cool. Variable will be T or empty. Below the if not available comment, add an if condition that checks if it's empty. Put the send to main menu comment in its statements area. Put the send to main menu comment in its statements area. All right, if not available comments, that checks if it's empty. All right, so we have to check if it's empty. And then if it is sent to the, to the main menu, and we do this with um, this if statement up here, except just changing that variable. If not available, paste. If I have to tab this over, and then inside of here, we're going to send to main menu. And I'm going to tab this over as well. And then this has to be bike availability instead. Bike availability. Bill it T. All right. Should work. All right. Uh, and if it checks if it's empty, bike availability. All 
I don't know. I don't know. Do they want me to get rid of the echo? And if condition that check if it's empty, put the in its statements area. The variable will be T or empty. T or empty. So if it's empty, then send it to main menu. Why is availability so hard to spell? Okay. Does that work? Okay, I need help here. Yeah. Oh my like, are you serious right now? That's what I have. Bro, are you serious? Run. Send to main menu if bike available. Maybe I'll figure it out later. I'm not really sure what's going on, so I'm gonna end it here for now. All right, so I figured out how to get past this one. Uh, the way you do it is you have to type in this command so that you can see the test files. So all these test files. Uh, so yeah, once you run this command, this uh, free code camp folder will be open to you. And then you can check out all the test files. And the test file we're interested in is this 1210 one. And this used to be super long. And it said like it has to be exactly like this. And I just changed it so it could be anything. And then I ran it and then it missed this time. So yeah, it's pretty weird, pretty stupid. Uh, but that's what you have to do to uh, skip this one. And then we can continue and move on. So yeah, just make sure you type uh, this in. I should probably get that get this up here so you know what what the type said. Dash I dash E S free that free code camp true free code camp false slash G project VS code settings. I found it inside of one of the forums. Uh, this guy was actually working on a bug in the Mario database, but um, then this person replied and said you should type this in, and then you can edit the tests. So that's where I found it and it, it worked. So let's, uh, now we can keep going and not have to worry about that. Okay. So let's continue. All right. In the if condition, you just added send users to the main menu with the message that bike is not available in the if condition you just added. We need uh, send users to the main menu with the message this. All right, so we can copy that and then go main menu and then have this message. That bike's not available. Um, if the input that should work, run. Uh, your script should call the main menu function with the correct arguments. Oh, is this not actually going to work? Seriously, it works. Which one would you like to rent? One, true, okay. One, 55 or 66. That bike's not available, how may I help you? Um, if the input is unavailable, in menu. Yeah, oh my gosh, are you serious? This isn't working either. What the heck? Okay, I guess I can change this one as well. So this is what, 1220 then? Or 1215? Main menu, that bike is not available. Yeah, this thing's not working either. So, scratch this. And we will change it to something else if I can actually use a mouse correctly. Yeah, we'll just change it to anything because it's making a piece of crap. All right, now it should run correctly. Yay! This thing is being so stupid. All right, remove the line where you print the bike availability variable. You don't need it anymore. Remove the line where you print this. All right, we don't need that anymore. All right, there we go. That one passed on its own. Let's go. Run the script and go to the rent menu. Alright, run the script. Okay, it works. <laughs> In the PSQL prompt, set all the bikes availability back to true. Alright, let's set all these back to true. Update bikes set available equal to true. And I have to connect. Darn it. 
Uh, so quit. Or actually, it did connect. It said attempting reset succeeded. All right. So now it works. Okay. In your script and else for when a bike is available, add these four comments in the else area. All right. So let's copy that and let's create an else area, else, and paste this. And then we just need to comment this out a bunch. Hashtag. And right here, hashtag. Right here, hashtag. There we go. And I also get rid of that and. They might be pretty particular on this. And also the correct comments run. Darn it, I thought this would happen again. Um, shoot. Okay, so this one is what, 1230? Uh, no, 1233. This one, bike is not available, get customers. Yeah, this one. All right, let's just change this to anything again because this thing is being stupid. All right, anything. Go back to here and run it. And then now it works. <laughs> you can't stop me. I'm the gingerbread man. As the customers say, uh, you need to get the customer info and find out if they are an existing customer. Below the get customer info comment, print what's your phone number with a new line in front of it. Right. Underneath get customer info, we need to echo this with a new line. So we need dash E in there, uh, backslash N and paste. There we go. Should work. Sweet. Below the line you just printed, read input into a phone number variable. Since the phone number is unique, you can use it to identify a customer. Read input into a phone number variable below the line you just printed. It's all right. We need a phone number, and that should be read, right? Read. Yeah, there we go. With the customer's phone number, you can get their name below where you got get the phone number. Create a customer name variable that gets the customer name from the database using the phone number. Okay, so using the phone number, we can grab the customer name. Okay, customer, customer name equals a PSQL. So we have to do a query here. Copy that, paste here. And then the query we have to do is select name from, uh, yeah, select name from customer or something. What do we have in our customer thing? Select all from customers. We have customer ID, phone, name. Okay, yeah. So we need to select name from customers, customers, where the phone equals dollar sign phone number. Phone number. That should be fine. Right? Our new from the database. Getting okay, it's query here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phone equals phone number. Oh, it has to be in quotes, single quotes. That's his why. There we go. Sweet. All right. If the customer is in the database with the phone number used, the variable will be set to the name. If not, it will be empty. And if condition below the if customer doesn't exist comment that checks if the variable is empty, place the next two comments in the then area. All right, so we have to do this thing again. If here and put it here, placed, and then put the next two comments in the this area here. So shift, and then we can grab them both at once. And we can also shift and tab. There we go. That should work. Please, please. No. Oh, never mind. Uh, this has to be customer name. Customer name. Now I don't know if I'm tweaking or they're tweaking. So this is a, uh, that's not very good. Let's see here. Customer name inside of there. Let's just copy this, see if this works. If it doesn't, then I'm going to have to change it again, uh, which is quite a shame, actually. It's quite a shame. 
All right. And hopefully that works. Run. Um, if I run this in here. Yeah, OK. I thought this would happen. And to the rescue, we can take a look at that test and change it. It's your phone number. Let's find it. Phone number, customer name. Customer doesn't exist. Uh, should have the correct if condition added. Yeah, it's this one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's, this is so annoying. Let's change this to anything. And now it should pass. Yippee. If the customer isn't in the database, you need to get their name so you can add them. Below the get new customer name comment, print what's your name with a new line in front of the message. Print what's your name. All right. Below the get new customer name. All right. We have to echo and then paste or dash E backslash N and then paste that. What's your name? Seriously. Um, seriously, run. Shoot, get new customer name. Why isn't this working? Okay, I guess I have to change this test as well. No problemo. I can do that. Let's grab this, anything, go back, and now run it. Sweet. All right, below the question you just printed, read input into a variable named customer name. All right. Below this, read customer name. Please work. Why aren't you working? Read input in variable. Can I reset? Hopefully it resets to the right spot and then I can just, hopefully it'll work. Like maybe I messed up, I'm not really sure. Read plus domer name. There we go, cool. You have the two pieces of information you need. Below the insert new customer comments, create uh, an insert customer result variable that inserts the customer into the database. All right, copy. We need to do this, which will insert, and that is going to be an insert statement of PSQL. And do I have to do anything? Yeah, I probably do. Okay. Insert into, insert into customers, customers, uh, name and phone number, right? So I need name and phone and values are going to be the dollar sign name, the customer name, the customer name, and the dollar sign uh, customer phone, customer phone, like so. I think that works. I just need to end this off. Let's try that. Right, run. I don't know, I don't know. Insert into customer's name, phone, values, values. Oh man. View the customer's table, single quotes around the bar chars, yeah. Customer name, phone number. Um, oh, phone number, let me see. That should be phone number, phone number. Yeah, there we go. Run the script and go to the rent menu. Run the script, go to the rent menu, and then enter 555 uh, when asked for phone number. All right, 555, 5555, and me when it asks for your name, me. All right, cool. That should have added a new customer to the database in the PSQL prompt to view all the data in the customers table. All right, select all from customers. 
customers. Um, I have to reconnect. There we go. And it is in there. Sweet. View all the data in the rentals table. Select all from rentals. Nothing. All right. So you still need to add the rental to the rentals table when a bike is picked out. View all the data in the bikes table. Select all from bikes. That's easy. Cool. And set the available column to false for the bike rented. Below the end of the if statement that inserts a new customer, add five more comments. Okay. Okay, let's copy this. And below the end of the if statement that inserts a new customer. Below the end of the if statement that inserts a new customer. Below this end of the if statement. Okay, so right here, paste. And then we have to get customer ID, insert bike rental, set uh, bike availability to false, get bike info, and send to main menu, control slash. There we go. Oh, let's go. That actually worked. Thank you. You're getting close to done with the rent functionality. To add a rental to the database, you need the customer ID. Below the get customer ID comment, create a customer ID variable that gets the customer ID using the phone number. Below get customer ID comment, create a customer ID variable that gets the customer ID using the phone number. All right, so paste that. It will get the customer ID using the phone number. I think we can use this here. It's basically going to be the same as this. And the customer ID is going to be here. Customer ID. That should work. Yeah. All right. Now that you have the bike ID and customer ID, you can add the rental to the database below the insert bike rental comment. Create an insert rental result variable that adds to the rental uh, table. All right. Paste that. Equals. And then we have to do an insert. So I'm I'm going to copy this insert statement here, if I can, come on, copy, paste, insert into rentals, and the rentals table has what in it, select all from rentals, ah, shoot, quit, um, DSQL, dash dash, uh, username equals free code camp dash dash db name equals bikes. There we go. Select all from rentals. Okay, we have a rental ID, customer ID that we need. Rental ID, customer ID, and then we have the bike ID, date rented, and date returned. Um, bike ID. And the date rented is going to be defaulted to now, and that should be fine. Okay, so the first value is the rental ID, which is going to be the rental ID. Customer ID. Oh, rental ID is uh, defaulting. So all I need is customer ID and the bike ID, right? All right. We need bucket. Yeah, okay. Customer ID is going to be this thing, dollar sign customer ID. Customer ID and the rental ID is going to be something up here. Bike availability, bike ID to rent. Yeah, bike ID to rent should work. Yeah, let's go. All right, that should add the rental to the database. The last thing to do is set available to false for the bike. Below the set bike availability to false comment, create a set to false result variable that does that. Comment. Grab that, paste here, or to do an up st up update statement, which should do that. So we're going to do update, update bikes, set availability, availability equal to false, where the bike ID is equal to dollar sign bike ID to rent. 
ID to point. That should work. Great. Come on, baby. Set like availability is false. Equals. I need equals in here. Ah, darn it. I thought that would work. Create a set to false result variable that does that. Set to false result. Update bikes set availability equal to false. Where bike ID equals availability. I think that's right. Bike ID to rent. Ah, shoot. Help me. Date bikes set available to false. Yeah, I guess I need some spaces around here. And that also has to be lowercase. False. Um, I don't know what you are looking for. But it seems right to me. Run. Will it run in this? Yes, it does. So I don't really understand why it's not working. Hmm. Might have to change this one as well. Darn. That's a shame. That is a shame. Oh, actually, maybe I just need spaces around here. Darn it. Oh. Okay, let me just copy this, see if that works. Copy this here. Paste here. Okay, that did work. I wonder what it changed. I don't even know. Run the script and go to the rent menu. Pick the first bike on the list and 5555. Five, five, five. Alright. Rent the bike. The first bike on the list. Alright, and enter 555. 555. Five, five, five. Okay, cool. In the PSQL prompt, view all the data in the rentals table. There should be a new rental. Alright. Select all from rentals. There we go. One, one, one. The rental was added and the date rented was filled in automatically. Next, view all the data in the bikes table. Order the results by bike ID. Select all from bikes. Order by bike ID. The available column was set to false for the bike you rented. Mm -hmm. The last thing to do is give a nice message about the rental. Below the get in bike info comments, create a bike info variable that gets the size and type in that order of the bike rented. That gets the size and type. All right. And or get bike info. All right. Paste that. It equals one of these little statements here. And it's going to be a select uh, where it equals that bike to rent. Select uh, something from bikes. And select size and type. Size, type from bikes where bike ID is that. Should work. Yep. Below the variable you just created, use echo to print it. All right. Echo, dollar sign, bike info. Awesome. Run the script again and go to the rent menu. There should be one less bike displayed. All right. Uh, do this. One. One less bike displayed. I guess so, yeah. There's no one. Um, pick the next bike on the list, too. Uh, using 555 five, five again. And then there we go. I picked out this 28-inch mountain bike. Uh, the message you want to print after someone rents a bike would have said, I have put you down for this. Okay. You need to format that variable for the message. The said command can be used to replace characters and patterns in text. It looks like this. Mm -hmm. And the terminal, enter, echo, to practice. Okay. Echo, 28, hype, mountain. Uh, apostrophe hype said s slash slash equals slash g okay 28 equals mountain 
that command you use pipe to string 28 mountain to the said command where it replaced all the spaces with equals. Enter the same command but replace all the spaces with nothing. With nothing. Okay. The G rejects flag stands for global. It will replace all instances of the pattern. In this case, it replaced all the spaces. Enter the same command but without the flag. Without the flag, it'll just do the first one. At that time, only the first instance of the pattern was replaced. The first space was removed. Enter the same command, but replace the first instance of that with a space. Uh, first instance of pipe with a space. So this one. I don't know what you mean. Uh, the previous command was that. You want to replace space with that. Enter that. Okay, 28 mountain said S. I just need to add a pipe in, in here. Okay. Okay, there we go. Enter the same command, but make the output look like how you want in the message 28 inch mountain. All right, so we just need to make sure we put this in there. Oh, no space though. There we go. Back in your script where you echo the bake info. Pipe the output into a set command that replaces that uh, with that, so the text will read size type. Uh, so that would become 28 mountain, for instance. All right. Back in your script, echo bike info. And we have to do this thing here, which is uh, pipe it into said of s slash pipe slash quote slash Something like that. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Run the script and rent another bike using the customer with phone number 555 again. Make sure the bike info printed what you want it to look like. All right. Let's rent a bike. Which one would you like to rent? Number three. Uh, 555. 5555. There we go. 29 inch mountain. Cool. Now it is formatted for the message. Take the echo command and the part that formats it. Put in a subshell and set the output into a variable named bike info formatted. Here's an example bike info formatted equals this formatted info here. Let's copy that and let's just go underneath here bike info formatted. Um, take that echo command and the part that formats it, put it in a subshell. Oh, so I just have to throw this in here and here, paste. Yeah, there we go. Cool. What you put in the subshell will be executed and the result of it will replace the subshell. In this case, the formatted bike info was printed when you ran the script before, so the bike info formatted variable will be set to that. Below the send to main menu comment, send users to the main menu with a message that would print. I have put you down for 28 inch mountain bike me if me rented the 28 inch mountain bike all right so let's copy this and send the users back to the main menu okay so send to main menu main menu and then i have to print this 28 inch mountain bike is this dollar sign bike info formatted bike info formatted and then me, I think I can leave, right? Or no. If me was rented, um, me is going to be a, some other. Oh, gosh darn it. Help me. Oh, customer name. Should be customer name. Dollar sign. Customer name. Now it will work. Come on, baby. Um, I've put you down for. This bike, customer name. Okay. Just echo it. Do they just want me to echo that? Send users to the main menu with a message. Below. The send the main menu. Yeah. Oh, why isn't this working? Bike info formatted. Um, does it run correctly? Yes, it does. Which one do you like to rent for? Five 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 five. Uh, if it put you down, how may I help you? I have a uh, extra space in here. That's weird. 
No, does it work? Darn you. I have like two extra spaces. Ah, uh, shoot. That's my name. Darn, that kind of sucks. How do I get rid of those extra spaces? Do I seriously have to do like a said thing? Um. Okay, let me see if I can just copy this and see if that works. Hopefully it does. Paste. Oh, this formatted bike. Ah, that's what I was forgetting. I see. Okay. Now it'll work, yeah. Run the script and rent the next bike on the list. Use the customer with 555 as their phone number. When you're done, exit the program. Uh, rent the next bike on the list. One. I guess it's five now, because I did one before. What's your phone number? Five, 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 five. Okay. Uh, when you're done, exit the program. Three. Cool. There's an extra space around the customer's name. You can use set again to fix that. Uh, in the terminal, enter echo me to print me with spaces around it to see if you can find out how. Echo M E. E printed, but you can only assume there's a space at the end. Uh, you can only assume, yeah. Place the last command in a subshell with quotes around it. Put a period right after the subshell and echo the whole thing in the terminal. Here's how it looks. All right, echo dollar sign, echo me, and then subshell period. There we go. Now you can be certain there's a space at the end. Within the subshell of the last command, use a pipe and the set command to replace the first space with no space. Here's a set replacement pattern you want. S slash slash slash. All right. Within the subshell of the last command. Within the subshell of the last command. Use a pipe and the set command. Use a pipe and the set command. To replace the first thing. So S slash slash slash. There we go. Like so, there we go. I removed only this first space it found. Change the previous command to replace all instances of a space instead of just the first one. We do that with a G at the end of there. I replaced all the spaces. You only had an extra space at the beginning of the customer name. Add a uh, caret in front of the space and the replacement pattern of the last command to only replace a space at the beginning of the text. So we just need a caret in front of the space and the replacement pattern. Carrots. Carrots. There we go. The caret you added means that's the start of the text, so it will replace a space only if it's at the beginning. Enter the last command, but add two more spaces at the beginning of the text. Okay. Um, three more. Like so. Um, I don't know. Like so. There we go. The caret space pattern only replace the first space. Add star to the end of the matching pattern to place all spaces at the beginning of the text. Okay, so I think I need a star here. There it worked. The customer's name only had an extra space at the beginning. Unsure as to why, but there are maybe others with extra spaces at the end as well. You can match the end of text with dollar sign. Change the matching pattern of the last command so it replaces a single space at the end. All right, with dollar sign. Like uh, like this, um, I think, right? The pattern is, oh, so get rid of the first thing. Okay. Add two more spaces to the end of the text in the previous command. Three spaces in total. Um, mm -hmm. One, two. All right. The only the pattern only replaces a single space at the end. Change the last command so it replaces all spaces at the end of the text. Can't we do that with a star? Dollar sign star, or no. Dollar sign plus, maybe? Dollar sign plus. Darn it. Um, help me. Dollar sign, oh, star dollar sign. Okay. Well, can't get them all right. Star dollar sign. There we go. That replaced all the spaces at the end of the text. You can use pipe as an or operator in a matching pattern to place one pattern or another. Use it to change the matching pattern so it would replace any amount of spaces at the beginning and any amount of spaces at the end of the text. All right, so we need an or. So 
we need a star with this and an or that's something like this okay okay that worked uh that didn't work actually it doesn't like that or operator for some reason check the manual for the set command to see if you can find anything man said quit that let's go somewhere in there is a flag for using extended regular expressions with said that might work oh yeah that's with a like a dash e at the end of it um so we can do the said command is in here and dash e i think that works right no um hmm <laughs> add it to this command that didn't work to find out i thought it was dash e but maybe it comes before it dash e here uh there we go yep that trimmed all spaces from the front and end of the text back in the last message of your script place the customer name variable in a subshell echo and pipe it into a said command that removes all spaces from the front and back use the same method you used in the terminal okay back in the last message of your script place the customer name variable in a subshell okay so the subshell is a uh, quote dollar sign quote dollar sign parenthesis and a parenthesis here with a um, quote I guess and then we can do echo this customer name and then pipe it into the said command said of dash e s slash carrots uh star pipe space star dollar sign slash slash g and hopefully that works um it doesn't seem like it's working because it's not ha doesn't not have the correct formatting so maybe i have to get rid of these quotes and maybe it will work now no there's still it's still not correct formatting now get rid of the echo maybe not really sure no same thing um maybe single quotes around this maybe that'll be fine no i have no idea honestly so i'm just gonna get a hint echo no but like how do you change the customer name variable to this no quotes around this at all Okay, so I guess that's fine. Run it. No, there's a this thing it does not like that. Oh, I need a, a single quote here. Oh now now it works. Okay. Great. Run. Darn you. Echo. I I forgot this echo. Echo. There we go. Cool. 73%. Run the script and rent another bike with the customer whose phone number is this when you're done exit the program. All right. Let's find the scripts. There it is. One, rent a bike. Six, what's your phone number? And there we go. When you're done exit the program, three. All right, run the script again, rent another bike, use 000 as the phone number this time, and test as the name of the new customer when you're done exit the program. One, seven, zero, 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 zero. What's your name? Test. All right, when you're done exit the program, three. Thank you for stopping in, run the script again, rent another bike with the customer you just created when you're done exit the program. All right, rent a bike. We want eight. Uh, what's your phone number? Zero, 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 zero. There we go. Uh, exit three. In the PSQL prompt, view all the data in your bikes table in order by the bike ID. All right, select all from bikes order by bike ID. I don't really know why we have to order it by bike ID since they're already ordered there but I guess we do. There should be two bikes left. Uh, actually just one because I messed up one time. Uh, next, look at all the data in the customers table. Select all from customers, customers. There we go. 
Come on, baby. We should view all the data in the rentals table. Select all. Oh. Rentals, not customers. Select all from rentals. There we go. The rent functionality looks like it all works. Delete the echo return menu line in the return menu function so you can get started with that. Delete echo return menu in the return menu function. All right, control shift K. Add three single line comments in that order. Hopefully this works. It should work. It's just a it's just a function, so it should work. All right, let's shift and then control slash. End it. Nice. Below the get customer info comment you just added, print what's your phone number with a new line in front. Get customer info. All right. So we have to do echo dash e backslash n. Paste that in. Cool, cool. Just below that, use read to get input into a phone number variable. Read phone number. All right. Just below that, set the customer ID variable to a query that gets the customer ID from the database using the phone number they gave you. Uh, haven't we done this before? Customer ID right here, right here. This is kind of the same, isn't it? Yeah, it is. If they are in the database, the variables will be their customer ID. If not, it will be empty. Below the if not found, add an if statement that checks if it's put, send a main menu comment. In. Uh, this is not going to work either. Darn it. Uh, that is annoying. Actually, it's looking for customer ID. Uh, where's the customer ID one? Oh, right here. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll just grab this. If not found, uh, no, this is going to be customer ID, customer ID, and then I can get rid of this, and then throw the sent main menu up here. Okay, that worked. Nice. If the customer sent found, send them to the main menu with the message, I could not find a record for that phone number. All right, send them back to the main menu if they're not found. All right, so uh, main menu, and then paste this in there. Sweet. All right, run the script and go to the main menu uh, and go to the return menu. Enter a phone number that is not in the database. When you're done, exit the program. OK, so enter the return bike menu. What's your phone number? That is not in the database. All right. And then uh, it's the program. OK. Add an else to the if condition for the if the phone number is found in the database. Place um, in the else area as single line comments. OK. Let's grab this and put it into an else statement here. Else, paste this, and let's make these into comments slash there we go you want to find out what rentals a customer has using their phone number and display them you will need to join all tables start by using the psql prompt to view all the data in the bikes table uh, doo -doo. okay so just go in here and view them select all from PS uh, from bikes. Next, use left join with bikes as left table to join the bikes and rentals tables. Use the using keyword to join the tables. All right, select all from bikes. Uh, left join on the rentals using the bike ID. Cool. Let's go. You only need the bikes that are being rented. Use an inner join with the same two tables to get only get those. All right, let's do inner join here. Awesome. Add a join to the previous command that joins the last table so you can get the customer information. Use an inner join and the using keyword again. All right, so inner join here. And we have to inner join to the last table, which is the customer information. So customers, customers using the customer ID. 
customer ID. All right, sweet. Add two conditions to the last query to narrow down the results to the bikes that are currently being rented by a customer with 555 as their phone number. The second condition should check the date return column. All right, where the phone uh, equals 5555-5555 and uh, date returned column is not null and date returned is not null or is null, something like that. Um, and date returned, not data returned. Yeah, there we go, 82%. Uh, now you have all the rentals for one specific customer. Only get the columns you need to display the bike information to them. They are the same three columns you use to display the list of available bikes. Only get the columns you need to display the bike information to them. Um, okay. I need help. The three columns you want. Oh, I see. Uh, don't press alt press control and i can go back to this and then select bike id type and size there we go that's awesome uh yeah one more thing order the results of the last query by their bike id column okay that's easy enough order by bike id that's the query you will need to use to get the customer to get the bikes a customer is renting in the script below the get customers a result comment create a customer rentals variable that gets the rentals for the customer use the phone number variable to get them <laughs> create a customer rentals variable under the get customer rentals right and this equals this um use the phone number variable to get them Use the phone number variable to get them. Oh, I see. Where phone equals this, I see. So let's copy this query. Let's copy that. Yeah, let's paste it here. We have to put this PSQL thing around it. So let's do that. Dollar sign, dollar sign PSQL, and a quote. And then at the end, we need a quote and a parenthesis. Yeah. And then the phone number is going to be that dollar sign phone number, phone number, and that has to be dollar sign. And then that should be good, right? Yeah, I think that's good. Right? Come on, run, run. Use the phone number variable to get them. Yeah, customer rentals, phone number. Uh, that should work. Unless I have a syntax error somewhere, which I guess is possible, but I thought this would work. Our phone number is that, and date return is, is null order by bike ID. Oh, I don't have that. I see. Order by bike ID. Order by bike ID. There we go. That should work. Cool, cool. All right, below the variable you just created, use echo to print it. Make sure to put double quotes around it. All right, use echo to print this. Echo, uh, dollar sign, customer rentals. Customer rentals, there we go. Run the script and go to the return menu. menu. Enter 555 for the phone number to see the rentals from me. All right, I return a bike. Five five five, five 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 five. There they all are. The query is working. If the customer has no rentals, the variable will be empty below the if no rentals comment and if condition that checks if it's empty. Put the send to main menu comment in the then area again. All right. And if condition to see if it's empty. If and then we have this opening dash z dollar sign customer rentals customer rentals then and then phi and then we can throw this in here like that i guess hey that works sweet if the customer has no rentals send them to the main menu with the message you do not have any bikes rented add the code below the next comment 
If the customer has no rentals, send them to the main me menu with the message this. Yeah, okay, that's easy enough. We can do main menu and then paste this here. I'll get in there. Add an else to the condition for when the customer does have rentals. Place four single line comments in it. Uh huh. Copy that. Add else to the condition. Else. Paste this in here. We have to display the rented bikes. If not number and send to main menu. And then make sure these are commented out. Sweet. Below the display rented bikes comment, print here are your rentals with a new line in front of it. Here are your rentals. Display rented bikes. Echo dash E backslash N paste. There we are. Move the echo customer rentals line to below the line you just printed. Uh huh. So we can move this down here to below this. Run the script and go to the return menu. Return. What's your phone number? Five 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 five. Okay, cool. Uh, where you print the list of rented bikes, pipe the command into a while loop that reads the data. You should read the data into bike ID bar type bar and size variables. Make it print each rented bike in the same fashion as the list of available bikes. That's the list of available bikes. And that's up here somewhere. So let's bring this down quick. Uh, where's this? Um, Thing that we did here. Didn't we do a, yeah, we did a while loop here. Let's copy this while loop and let's display the rented bikes and echo customer rentals, customer rentals while, and then we have to do, oh, that works. Cool. ID type bar. Okay. Run the script and go to the return menu. And do the same phone number again to make sure the list is showing up correctly. I think I can get rid of this as well. Um, Control J, bring that up. And let's do this again. Um, enter the same phone number again to make sure it's showing up correctly. Whoops, I did that wrong. Uh, Control C, oh, let's move on, whatever. Below the ask for bike to return comment, print which one would you like to return with a new line in front of it. Below the ask for bike to return. All right, echo uh, dash E uh, backslash N paste. Below the line you just printed, read input into a bike ID to return variable. Come on. Copy that. Read input into it. So read, paste. Like ID to return. Below the if not a number comment, check if the input for the bike ID to return is a number using the same method you did earlier. Place send to main menu comment in the uh, in the statement. All right. Check if the input to, is a number using the same method you did earlier. Now right, we have to go check if it's a number uh, up here somewhere. Where did we do that? Uh, right here. If it's not a valid number, if it's not a number, we have to do this, paste, like ID to return, to return, and hopefully that works. Now uh, we have to get rid of this. Um, darn it, I thought that would work. Then else, I have to get rid of else. I don't know why that's in there. No. Or what was here before? Nothing. And then I add an else. I see. I have to add an fi and move that into there. Fi. Maybe get rid of that. Darn you. Darn you. Bike ID to return. Why is this say rent? I need that to say return. There we go. Cool. 
If they don't input a number, send them to the main menu with that is not a valid bike number as a message. Send them back to the main menu. Main menu. That is not a valid bike number. Okay. I need a period. Okay, cool. 91%. And else for when they do input a number, place check if input is, oh my gosh, this is so long. And else, else, paste. Check if input is rented and send to main menu. There we go. You need to check if the input is a bike ID rented by the customer so you can return it in the PSCO prompt. Join the rentals and customers table with an inner join using the using keyword. Okay, so PSQL. We have to do a select um, all from rentals. Uh, inner join on customers using the uh, using the rental ID customer ID customer ID there we go right yeah there we go all right add three conditions to the previous query check the phone bike ID and date return columns to narrow the results to the first bike you entered you rented with me all right so check the phone uh, okay, so check the phone. Check the phone, bike ID, and date returned to narrow down the results. I thought that would do it. Uh, add three conditions to the previous query. Oh, they want me to add conditions to it? Okay, just give me the answer, please. Uh, give me this. Oh, shoot, I can't. Ah, darn you. And it should be select all. Darn you. You tricked me. Select all. We need where the phone equals 555, 5555. We need and bike ID equals one, and the date returned is null. There we go. All right, you only need to know what bike is going to be returned. Narrow the columns from the last query to only get the one column you would need to, for returning a bike, which would be the bike ID. All right, so bike ID. All right, or what, what would you need? What what column would you need for this? Customer ID? I don't know. Rental ID. That's what we need. Rental ID. There we go. Back in the script, below the check if input is rented comment, create a rental ID variable that gets the rental ID of the bike that was input. Uh, choo -choo, rental ID. Uh, check if, if input. Okay. Rental ID, rental ID equals, that gets the rental ID of the bike that was input. Check if input is rented. We have to do this PSQL prompt thing with this. So let's do that. Actually, I should do the PSQL thing first, um, which is dollar sign, let's see, dollar sign PSQL, quotes, and then off and then paste. And then our phone is the phone and stuff like that. Do I have to add that? Um, I probably do, yeah. All right, so the phone number is gonna be the customer phone. Dollar sign, customer phone, I think. Customer phone. Our phone number, read phone number. It's going to be phone number, phone number, and bike ID is going to be the uh, bike ID, dollar sign, bike ID. I don't know, actually, what is it? Bike ID to return. 
like ID two return and the date return is null. Okay, that's fine. Sweet, we're moving along. Follow it if not if input not rented comment add an if that checks if the rental ID variable is empty. If the rental ID is empty. If dash z rental ID. Then if I send to main menu, I'm guessing. And in, the, in that area, yeah. Run. Why is this not working? Dollar sign. There we go. If the input isn't rented by the given customer, send them to the main menu with you do not have that bike rented as the message. Good. Copy that. Let's do main menu again. And paste that in. Add an else to the if condition you just added. Use echo to print rental ID found in it. All right. And else. Else. Echo. Quote. Paste this. Let's go. Run the script and go to the return menu. Enter 555 for the rented bikes. And put a bike that isn't on the list. And then do one that is on the list. All right. Return a bike. Uh, what's your phone number? Enter 555, 5555. Which one would you like to return? 54. Uh, how may I help you to return a bike? 555, 5555, 5. and then now we want to do number one. All right, cool. Looks like it works. Delete the line where you print the rental ID. Delete the line where you print the rental ID. Rental ID, rental ID. Right here. Let me know. Echo rental ID, echo. Where I print the rental ID. This one? I don't know where that is. Where is it? Help me. Delete the line where you print the rental ID. Oh, delete that one. Okay. Delete this one. Cool. Add three single line comments in the else area, this stuff. Inside this here, we need update date return. And send to main menu, set bike availability to true. All sorts of cool stuff. After a person picks a bike to return and you know that it's a bike they have returned, you need to, or a bike you have, they have rented, you need to update all the info in the database to return it. Below the update date returned comment, create a return bike result variable that sets the date returned column to now. For the bike rented, use the rental ID to figure out which road to update. All right, copy that. Update date returned, paste this, equals uh, PSQL thing. Copy. We have to update. Yeah, let's get rid of this quick. Update our bikes. We know our date returned rentals. Update rentals set date returned equal to now. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now uh, where the bike ID equals. Wow, blah, 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 dollar sign, rental ID. Or not rental ID, uh, bike ID to rent. To uh, return, I mean, bike ID to return. Something like that. And then, yeah, should be good, right? Use a rental ID. Oh, rental ID, actually. Where rental ID is that? Great. Rental ID equals dollar sign. Rental ID. Let's try that. There we go. That should update the rentals table. Lastly, you need to make the bike available again below the set bike available to true comment. Create a set to true results variable that makes the bike available again. All right, equals. We need to set the bike to available again. PSQL. Update. Update uh, bikes set available available equal to true uh, where the bike id equals the dollar sign uh, bike 
to return, lake ID to return, something like that. Yeah, sweet. So close. After that is done, send them to the main menu with thank you for returning your bike as the message. Copy that. Send them to main menu, main menu, paste that in. Run the script and return one of the bikes that me has rented out when you're done exit program. This might be the last one. I'm not sure. All right. We need to return a bike. Uh, 555. We need to return number three. Uh, thank you for returning your bike. How may I help you when you're done exit program three? Thank you for stopping in. In the PSQL prompt, view all the data in the rentals table. Uh, select all from rentals. There we have it. Now the rental has been returned. View all the data in the bikes table and order by their bike ID. Select all from bikes where the bike ID or order by, whoops. Order by bike ID. There we go. All right, and the bike is available again. This is the last step. Run the script once more. Feel free to play around. Rent and return some bikes. When you're ready to be done, return all the bikes you rented and exit the program. All right, the moment of truth. What did we build? We can rent a bike and then return a bike. So I'm going to rent uh, number three. And I'm going to enter my phone number, 000000. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. And I rented that. Now I'm going to return it to what's my phone number, 000000. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. Uh, that's the bike I just rented out, which is number three. Which one do I want to return? I want to return number seven, maybe. And now I want to return another bike, um, which is going to be uh, number three this time. And number seven, it's not showing up anymore, so that's good. And now I can exit, and I return two bikes, and rented one out for a little bit, and sweet. All right, you should run your script by executing it. I did. Yeah. Did, oh my gosh. Exit. Exit. Return, oh, return all the bikes you rented. Oh, shoot. Uh, darn. Return zero 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 eight. We need to return another one. Five 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 five. Oh man, this is gonna take forever to return. What's your phone number? Five 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 five. Number two two five 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 five. Number four. Return. Number five, we'll return a bike. We need number six now. There we go. Number three, exit. There we go. Tutorial complete. Let's go. So now, when I go to Free Code Camp, this thing will have a nice little check mark next to it. Uh, I had to get a little bit hacky there, but I eventually made it through this 210 lesson course. And uh, yeah. Not the funnest thing in the world, but we got her done. The next thing we're going to do is the salon appointment scheduler, so stay tuned for that. I'll see you later. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and I'll see you next time. Bye.